Vero reflex is an example of where there is a course correction. It's a it's one of those reflexes that's not um, anticipatory. It is in reaction to a change in blood pressure, and uh, and so this is the way it works. Uh, the blood pressure is is sensed in two areas: in the aortic arch and in the carotid body, and those two areas uh, are innervated by a regular somatosensory afferents. Call them viscer viscerosensory afferents. It's all um, in th in this case they're actually placo derived um, from the epibranchial placode. So they travel in cranial nerves nine and ten, uh, and these types of afferents are called baroreceptors. So they're sensitive to pressure. They're sensitive to pressure in the in the uh, blood vessels. Um, information from these baroreceptors, and they have tonic activity. There's tonic pressure in the uh, in the blood vessels. This reaches our viscerosensory nucleus, the nucleus of the tractus solitarius, or nucleus of the solitary tract, uh, commonly abbreviated as NTS, which then is relayed through a, a, a couple of different areas in the ventrolateral medulla, and then an area called, well, described as rostral ventrolateral medulla, then projects back down to the spinal cord, to the uh, intermediate lateral cell column uh, in the thoracic cord, and from there uh, uh, sends um, preganglionic axons out to uh, ganglia that then send postganglionic fibers out to skin to, to the vessels in the skin and this uh, so it's going to uh, increase skin, skin vasoconstriction in response to a decrease in blood pressure so if there's a decrease in blood pressure the the vessels constrict that in that has the effect of increasing um, blood pressure. It also increases cardiac contractility and increases heart rate. And so this is a this is a reflex. It's it's involves smooth muscle instead of skeletal muscle, but it, it really is very similar. There's a change and it's a response to keep things uh, steady. Now, is the barrel reflex always working? It, it, it's and it's the same answer as the as say the stretch reflex. Well, yeah, the stretch reflex works, but it can also be modulated. It can be turned off. If I it, it um, I can decide not to allow my knee to jerk, um, and so uh, the the stretch reflex um, can be turned off. So can the barrel reflex. What what's a situation where you might want to turn off the barrel reflex? Well, exercise. You want your your blood pressure to go up, and you don't want to. Uh, oppose that increase in blood pressure, right? That is a a um, a necessary increase, and it is it's it's um, centrally mediated by the same command center that is going to start the exercises. Also, going to allow for this anticipatory suppression of the baroreflex. All right. So there, there are two points that I want to make about this baroreflex. I'm, we're, we're not going to spend much time on it. But one is that in individuals that have a, a spinal cord lesion, lesioning this pathway, there may be uh, problems with the resting blood pressure. Okay? So spinal cord injury patients may have a problem maintaining uh, blood pressure. The second point is extremely common, which is uh, orthostatic hypotension. So under normal circumstances, we, we don't let the baroreflex, uh, we don't need the baroreflex when we're making a, a movement that we know is going to have an effect on uh, blood pressure. So what's the, what's the poster child for that movement? The poster child for that movement is is standing up from either a squatting or a sitting position. When you stand up, now all of a sudden the blood can, can rush down. Gravity now has a lot more effect on the distribution of your blood than when you were sitting or squatting. And if left to, if, if nothing else would happen, 
if the if the brain were not uh, involved in an anticipatory adjustment, then what would happen is the blood would go down, pool down in the legs. There would be no blood up in your head, and you would faint. Syncope would happen. Okay, so that doesn't happen. Um, and what ha the reason it doesn't happen is because when you stand up, before you stand up, there is a constriction of the blood vessels in your legs. So this is an anticipatory uh, homeostatic adjustment that is going to prevent you from losing enough cerebral perfusion pressure to maintain consciousness. The, uh, a, a, any impairment of that can lead to a, one of several different types of orthostatic hypotension. Now, orthostatic hypotension is extremely common in, in an elderly population, um, and it, it takes two forms. One is it can happen to you or me, or it can happen to all of us when our blood volume is low. And so one group of people that often suffer from low blood volume is elderly men. So elderly men often have benign prostatic hypertrophy that makes urination slightly uncomfortable. And in order to avoid urinating so much, they drink less, and so now their, their blood volume is decreased. And they don't, they're not sufficiently hydrated, and now when they stand up, they don't have enough blood pressure to, to support that. So that will um, lead to this, this orthostatic hypotension, in a, a version of orthostatic hypotension. That's not pathological. The answer is easy. Drink more water. There is also a, various pathological uh, forms of this, some easier to treat than others. Some are extremely difficult to treat. And this is a, a, a big problem. So if the answer is not drink more, then the answer may not be available or may not be easily available. And this is a big problem because it's going to lead to, um, uh, it's really going to impact a person's life, um, uh, have a negative impact on, on, a, on a person's life. Okay, so what we're going to talk about next is breathing. <laughs>